Once the bronchioles get very, very, very tiny, they're called terminal bronchioles. You've probably heard that word terminal, meaning the end of something, like a terminal at an airport, or if someone has terminal cancer, cancer it means the end. So these terminal bronchioles are the smallest ones. terminal bronchial and then they branch even just a little bit further to what are called respiratory bronchioles. It's just the very end. Of course this is all on a microscopic level. So these um, respiratory bronchioles have clusters of alveoli on the very end of them. And in my picture, each one of these little grapes is an alveolus, and they all have openings onto the respiratory bronchial, sort of like little circular shaped rooms coming off of one hallway. So that's one alveolus, and that word means grape. So you can see you have clusters of alveoli that are the location of gas exchange. So this is where the excitement happens. Now if you're going to have gas exchange, you've got to have a blood supply. So there is an artery uh, that comes from each, comes to each lung called the pulmonary artery and it branches to little capillaries that go across uh, or next to each alveolus. And that's how the gas exchange occurs. So oxygen will go from the alveolus into the um, capillary. And carbon dioxide will go from the capillary to the alveolus. And that's what we call gas exchange. So now we'll look even more closely at this site of gas exchange. So in my picture here, this represents one alveolus and this represents one capillary. These are the cells that make up the wall of an alveolus. You can see that they're fragile. Smoking damages them. These cells are simple, squamous, epithelial cells. And the cells that line the capillary are also So we have the thinnest kind of cells next to the thinnest kind of cells so that we have a very thin gas exchange membrane. And the same kind of cells here. And we also call this endothelial. It means inside the vessel. So endothelial cells are made of simple squamous epithelial cells. And then in here is a red blood cell. And oxygen goes from the alveolus to the red blood cell. And carbon dioxide 
goes from the capillary to the alveolus. This right here, this, these layers of cells, the alveolar cells and the capillary cells make up what's called the respiratory membrane. It's very thin and in disease processes it may thicken, may get um, fibrotic tissue there. And anything that impedes diffusion of gases is going to cause respiratory problems. Okay, within each alveolus are a couple other kinds of cells. This cute little amoeba looking cell is actually a white blood cell or a macrophage. That macrophage is going to fight infection. whether that infection is a tuberculosis bacterium or uh, viral cells, or I'm sorry, viruses that get inside of the cells. The alveolus also has one other kind of cell. This is called a surfactant. producing cell. And this is a soapy, slippery fluid that decreases surface tension ah, I ran out of room. That decreases surface tension. We're going to turn the page now like this. If it weren't for surfactant, these cells are so fragile that the entire alveolus would collapse. And that is exactly what can happen with premature babies. Premature babies, especially boys, don't make as much surfactant. And so when they're born, in between each breath, their alveoli, some of them actually collapse down. And they have to use a lot of muscular strength to inflate their lungs again. It is sometimes hard to even watch them struggling to breathe. If a mother knows, if the doctors know ahead of time that the mother might deliver prematurely, they might give her steroid shots, which stimulate these cells to start making surfactant so that the baby is more likely to be ready to be born.